Matter to Man, Protein to Purpose, Accident to President, and Poo Poo to Paw Paw. Welcome to the Evolution Revolution, my Stardust siblings. It's all the rage, you know. Profs at prestigious universities, top-notch high school teachers, and all kinds of scientists the world over insist that evolution is a bona fide fact. But is it? Yes, evolution is a fact. Evolution definitely occurs even if God created life. And most people do accept evolution as a fact, with the exception of those holdout creationists who only reject it because it hurts their view of God creating everything. No amount of evidence will ever change their minds. Also, what does this guy mean by saying poo poo to paw paw? That makes no sense whatsoever and would not be something that evolution would explain. They literally have to fabricate information in order to refute evolution as we'll see in this video. So if y'all want to fuck around and find out how Reasons for Hope fabricates information to refute evolution, then please stay tuned. What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the godless engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how Reasons for Hope argues against evolution being a fact. Now, what we're looking for is the Reasons for Hope team to be addressing evolution and its mechanisms. I don't want to hear anything about abiogenesis or other processes that have nothing whatsoever to do with evolution. Well, we're going to gander at the biggie and take it on mano a mano. How, you ask? With math. But before I jump into my speedy soliloquy, when I say evolution, I'm talking about mindless and undirected forces arranging already existing atoms over lots of time, eventually and ultimately producing all the life we see around us. Uh, that's not how anybody would define evolution. I don't even know what you're talking about with this definition. Because it seems like you're mixing up basic chemistry with abiogenesis, and then right there at the end, something similar to evolution? It's really just a garbled mess. How any reasonable person person would define evolution from a scientific standpoint would be a change in allele frequencies in a population of organisms. This change in allele frequencies would be an indication as to the genetic diversity within that population that would allow them to adapt to their environment. Evolution is the best explanation for the diversity of life that we observe today, but I really don't know what in the fuck this guy's talking about. Now, Back to math and a little bit of chemistry. But don't worry, you don't need to know much to knock down this fallaciously feeble, finicky, and faulty Frankensteinian fable foisted fervently from fanciful figures framing fakery for Faustian fame. Uh, I'm not sure what he means by this giant alliteration, but let's break it down line by line. He starts off by calling evolution fallacious. I don't know how evolution can be fallacious because evolutionary theory doesn't make or postulate any kind of argument. He also calls it Frankensteinian, which I'm guessing means that it's just a bunch of cobbled together ideas that don't really go together, but people have forced them to go together in order to come up with the scientific theory of evolution. And that, again, does not make any kind of sense. It also seems like a claim that he would need a lot of evidence in order to support. But yet, of course, we're not going to get that from this video. Finally, I want to focus on the very last part where he says... Faustian fame. The term Faustian refers to a German astronomer that supposedly sold his soul to the devil. So basically, what we can infer from this phrase is that evolution became popular not because it's the best explanation for the diversity of life, but because somebody made a deal with the devil to make it popular. What else could Faustian fame mean if not fame that was acquired through the barter of souls with the devil. I really don't know how anybody can seriously think this. No, 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 no. And uh, here we go. This is a protein, the basic building block of life. A protein is made up of a chain of amino acids that bond together in a specific sequence. When it comes to living things, though, not just any amino acid will do and not just any sequence will work. First, of the roughly 300 amino acids we know of, only about 20 are useful for life. Second, these amino acids must be arranged in a very rare sequence to form the right kind of protein useful to build a living cell. Uh, 
This is abiogenesis, not evolution. I don't understand why apologists have to strawman evolution by painting it as some process that has nothing to do with evolution. Oh, maybe it's because they don't really have any kind of evidence whatsoever to actually refute evolution. So they have to build up their own straw man version of evolution so they can just knock that down. Regardless though, this entire argument in this video is about the origin of life. You can literally sidestep this entire argument by saying, well, God definitely created life, but then evolution took over after that point. But in any case, his anti-abiogenesis argument requires chemical reactions to occur sequentially instead of in parallel. While life arising through abiogenesis is unlikely, it's not impossible. And any argument from small probabilities is going to suffer from this fact. He can posit as many unlikely scenarios as he wants to. It doesn't change the fact that there are more than enough opportunities for life to arise naturally. So you got the basics. Let's do the math. What are the odds that an undirected, mindless process like evolution could produce just one single protein molecule fit for life? Let's keep it simple. The size of a protein with a stable structure called a fold ranges between about 75 and 30,000 amino acids. Let's just take a small number like 150. Fair enough? Great. So, if each amino acid in the chain of 150 has roughly 20 possible variations, that would mean a life-permitting protein forming by chance would be 20 to the 150th. Now you reduce that down, pass it around, you get 10 to the 195th on the wall. That's a 1 with 195 zeros after it, just in case you didn't know. This argument from small probabilities seems good on the surface, but when you consider that chemical reactions are happening constantly, and they are happening in parallel with other chemical reactions, it doesn't really seem all that great. All this argument does is show that life arising naturally through the process of abiogenesis is rare, but not impossible. What he requires you to do is to assume that these small probabilities mean that it's impossible for life to arise naturally. He relies on your ignorance of statistics and probability in order to make his argument convincing. This just screams dishonesty, and you should never trust a person that's going to exploit your weaknesses like this guy is doing. But there are other rare sequences that can work, and we would have to factor that into the equation, but I'll be honest, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> it should surprise nobody that the guy making a horribly lazy argument against evolution is also too lazy to account for all of the information. Thankfully, Doug Axe, a molecular biologist, has, and he found that the odds of a relatively short protein to properly function are less than 1 in 10 to the 77th, which is true for a large number of proteins. So that's a 1 with 77 zeros. Now you throw the peptide and the left-handed amino acid problems in there, you get something close to 10 to the 164th. Doug Axe runs the Biologic Institute. The Biologic Institute was initially created by the Discovery Institute. The Discovery Institute is a creationist institution looking to push creationism instead of actual scientific advancement. I'm not saying that scientists who are also creationists can't do good science, but in the case of creationism, yeah, they're all kind of really bad. Just like here. It's another argument from small probabilities that requires your ignorance of how probabilities work. This entire argument does not take into account how often chemical reactions occur and the fact that they occur in parallel with each other. This argument also ignores the fact that once these amino acids started to form, then they would have continued to form more frequently. Again though, creation scientists are bad at doing the very basics that science requires. Now, keep in mind that scientists define the occurrence of anything with less than 1 in 10 to the 50th as absurd. But we're way beyond absurd here. Allow me to paint a visual. It would be like traveling the universe in an accidentally manufactured spacecraft, stopping on a whim, then reaching out blindfolded into a sea of 10 to the 80th different colored atoms and retrieving the only red one. All this, mind you, just to get one protein, and you need roughly 300 to form the simplest living cell we know of. But that's not a true representation of abiogenesis at all. A better representation would be some obscene amount of spaceships doing that exact same thing happening multiple times every single second. It might take a lot of time for them to find that one red atom, but that atom is getting found, just like with abiogenesis. 
It may take a long time for life to arise naturally through abiogenesis, but it definitely will happen given the right circumstances. This example is the reason why they will always fail at arguing against a natural explanation for life. Also, if I really need to point this out again, this is not an argument against evolution. This entire video has nothing to do with a change in allele frequency in a population of organisms. He's not even arguing against genetic mutations or any other mechanism or process related to evolution. But this is supposed to be an evolution debunk video, right? I thought that he said that he was gonna disprove evolution as a fact. If your argument can be completely sidestepped from the get-go by saying, okay, well, God may have started life. If it could be sidestepped that easily, you don't have an argument against evolution. Because whether or not God started life, evolution definitely happened after that point. But the point is this, you can't get a protein, you can't get a cell, and you can't get a life. That's just, well, life, so deal with it. But at least be honest with me, you wouldn't bet on the next hand after your opponent dealt himself a royal flush, would you? And that's far more likely to happen than our protein problem. Oh, again. He's thinking too small. What he needs to postulate is an obscene amount of poker hands being played and you betting on just one of those poker hands being the absolute best poker hand that you could possibly get. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. So please don't bet something more precious on an absurdity. And that's all I got for now, but rest assured, this chucklesome notion that blind, undirected processes can produce even a single protein, let alone life, has been, dare I say, mathematically anyway, debunked. Adios. Well, this guy seems to have failed to achieve the one thing he set out to do in this video. Debunk evolution as a fact. By the way, evolution is a fact. All this guy did in his video was provide an argument against abiogenesis. That has nothing to do with evolution. God could have started life, but then evolution would have taken over after that point. That's not good enough for creationists though, because it fucks with their whole idea that God created all life as it exists today. There's literally no evidence for that. So what creationists have to do is end up attacking everything but evolution. It's sad, but also, not surprising. Well, heathens, that's going to be it for me today. If you will, please go down below and let me know what you think about Reason to Post's video. Do you think they have some good, solid points about abiogenesis? Obviously not evolution, but abiogenesis. Let me know in the comments below. And hey, while you're down there, why don't y'all smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of video. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.